Hello, everyone, and welcome to another A S R Hatch Notes with Yuli. Today, we're going to take a look at the League of Legends patch 11.19, which is the second and final round of Worlds focus changes. There are a couple champion nerfs and a lot more buffs. The new champion, Bex, is being released and we're getting new skins which include the Dawn and Nightbringer skin line and Worlds 2021 Jarvan. The first champion to receive changes is Aatrox who's getting his W, Infernal Chains. Cooldown decreased again after it was heavily nerfed in the past. Riot is increasing Akali's base health regeneration to slightly help her through the game without impacting her power in full-on fights. Despite of being incredibly tanky, Cho'Gath has been struggling to meaningfully influence fights. This patch, the cooldown on his Q, Rupture, is being reduced to give him more CC and zoning opportunities. The changes Fizz received last patch didn't turn out as expected and are being fully reverted. Instead, he's getting a simple buff to the damage of his ultimate, jump the waters, and a shorter cooldown on his E, playful trickster. Galio's W, Shield of Durand, now gets a lower cooldown with rank. Gragas is getting more AP scaling on the damage of his W, Drunken Rage, so his various AP builds pack more of a punch. Similar to Akali, Gwen is getting her base health regeneration increased to give her more durability. Cannon has been on a rise in pro play priority lately, so Riot decided to tone down the damage on his Q, Thundering Shuriken, to keep him in check. Mordekaiser is getting some love in the form of a shorter cooldown on his E. Death's Grasp. Riot is also enhancing Poppy's early lane power by decreasing the cooldown on her passive, Iron Ambassador, so that she can take greater advantage of favorable matchups. Kiana is getting some fine tune adjustments to her EQ combo and more bonus damage versus monsters on her Q. Edge. Of Ixtal. Riot acknowledges that your Necton was hit a little too hard last patch and is compensating by giving him more tankiness and a shorter empowered animation and self lockout duration on his W. Ruthless Predator. Rice is getting his Q overload, AP ratio reduced, and his E spell. Flux. Cooldown increased to make sure he doesn't dominate at Worlds. To help Sejuani stir up more action, she's getting more damage on her Q, Arctic Assault, and a shorter cooldown. Seraphin now has a shorter cooldown on her ultimate, and core at all ranks. Sion is getting a buff to the shield of his W. So, furnace to help him lane more stably. Sona has been too powerful, especially in pro play. So Riot is reducing her defenses by nerfing her base armor and pairing this with some bug fixes to her passive power cord. Q, M of Valor, and E, Song of Celerity. Last patch's change to Soraka's ultimate, Wish, has left her 
a little bit too strong, so she's getting a nerf to its base healing. Riot is loosening Silas' chains a little bit by giving him more mana and mana regeneration. And lastly, Varus is getting his Q, Piercing Arrow, cooldown increased to tackle his lethality focused builds, which are more reliant on it. Many of you will be very excited about the news that Ultra Rapid Fire and World Clash are returning this patch, but I will not be going in depth on this, so if you're curious, you should definitely check out the notes. And last but not least, we have increased AFK penalties which include new penalty tiers that at the highest tier can result in a two-week queue lockout. And these delays and lockouts apply to all queues except of TFT and Clash. So, don't go AFK. And that's it for this patch. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you for watching.